Today is Family Fusion Sunday. Family Fusion Sunday. Anytime there are five Sundays during a month, uh, we will take that fifth one and invite all of our kids who are usually involved in our kid ministry, uh, kid men, we invite them to come in and be a part of us and be with us in the audience today. So, kids, welcome to the auditorium with your parents. And I didn't realize how good looking our kids are. You know, maybe it's the lights in here or something. Man, you're looking good today. But we welcome you in here today. And I just want to take a moment to thank all of you uh, youth sponsors. Most of them today have their orange kingdom worker shirts on. Kind of, uh, you know, kind of gives you a clue of who they are. Thank you for investing in the next generation. When you count our Sunday morning, two services, and then our teen ministry on Sunday night, we have more than 120 uh, youth involved in our kid ministry here at, the, here at the Crossing. That's fantastic. And I just want to thank those of you who are sponsors, who are on purpose investing uh, in the next generation and helping them develop as devoted followers of Jesus. And I know that the parents appreciate you. Uh, the parents appreciate what's happening back there. We've got all kinds of stories of just things that are coming from our kids' mouths and their hearts about what they're learning and how, how they're living for, for the Lord. Thank you for investing in them. Uh, Mom and Dad, don't you appreciate them? We do. We do. Kids, I am so thankful for the privilege that I get to preach on the Sunday that you're in the audience. Now, I don't get back there very often, so I don't, I don't get to see you a lot. So I'm very grateful today that I get to preach while you're in here. And here's why I'm so excited. I want to remind all of you, next gen, you kids, you youth, uh, uh, teenagers, I want to remind you that you have the capacity inside you to make some decisions today, to make some commitments today that can last a lifetime. In fact, kids, I'm so excited that you're in here today because you can make some commitments today that's just going to set you up for such a blessed, blessed life. Now, kids, just raise your hand if you want a, a life that's blessed, you want a life that is marked by the favor of God, you want God's blessings just pouring out, just raise your hand if that's, you want that to be true. Well, getting baptized soon, well, that, that's awesome. Wow. Uh, yeah. Okay, kids, put your hands down because now I want you to raise your hand if you want a life of turmoil and you want a life of pain and you want a life of ruin and destruction and hurt and you want to be crying all the time and you want to be miserable. Raise your hand. Come on. We, somebody. Okay, good. Tom. Tom, how did you get in the front row with the kids? Anyway. No, you don't want a miserable life. You don't want a life that falls apart. You don't want a you know, life full of pain and hurt. You want a life that's marked by the favor of God. You want a life that is full of the blessings of God. I know that's what you want. I'm so excited today because you have the capacity, you have the power to make some commitments today that sets you up for the blessed life possible. And I'm so excited. I want to tell you, uh, I want to start with telling you my testimony of my life as a kid. When I was four years old, most of you that I'm looking at right now are older than four years old, but when I was four years old, I knew I was going to be a preacher. At four. Maybe even before that, but I'm saying four. Four. At four years old, I knew I was going to be a preacher. At four years old, the questions would come. Hey, Mark, you want to be a policeman? No. Hey, Mark, you want to be a fireman? No. My dad was a farmer. At the, you want to be a farmer? <laughs> no. <laughs> I'm sorry, Dale, I'm sorry. <laughs> you want to be a baseball player? <laughs> well, maybe I could be a baseball player and then go be a preacher. But you want, I want to be a preacher. And I, at four years old, I made a commitment. I'm going to be a preacher. I never considered any other job. There's a lot of good jobs out there. I'm going to be a preacher. 
I've been preaching for 28 years. I made that decision four. At five, I made the decision, I will never, ever smoke. Now, and I'm a, I'm a believer that, you know, if you smoke and, you know, you know I don't think smoking is going to, you know, take you to hell. I just think it's going to make you smell like you've been there. Now listen, at five, at five years old, I made the decision, I will never ever smoke because I watched my mama and my papa and my aunts and my uncles smoke like chimneys. Not me. Not me. I will never ever smoke and never have. I made that decision at five. When I was 10, when I was 10 years old, I made a decision based upon, I read a story uh, from Luke chapter 1, a story in the Bible from Luke chapter 1, and it was a story where the angel of the Lord came to Zechariah, and he said to Zechariah, he predicted to Zechariah that you are going to have a son. And he's going to be great. He's going to be such a great man of God. And his life is going to be full of blessing after blessing of blessing. He's going to be so full of the Holy Spirit. And you're going to call him John. And he predicted the birth of John the baptizer. I want you to read. I want you to read with me the text. I I want you to read what the angel said to Zechariah, John the baptizer's daddy. Listen. Do not be afraid, Zechariah. Your prayer has been heard. Your wife Elizabeth will bear you a son, and you are to call him John. He will be a joy and a delight to you, and many will rejoice because of his birth, for he will be great in the sight of the Lord. He is never, he is never to take wine or other fermented drink. And he will be filled with the Holy Spirit even before he is born. He will bring back many of the people of Israel to the Lord their God. I remember reading that and at 10 years old, I was 10 and I was able to connect from this passage. I was able to connect the blessing and favor of God to a life totally abstinent from the use of alcohol. And at 10 years old, I make the decision, I will never, ever drink alcohol. I was 10. And I never have. Now, I've had several cartons of rum rum raisin ice cream Way too much. But I was 10. Kids, when I was 12, I made the decision. I made the decision. I am going to be a follower of Jesus. 36 years later, I'm still following. Now, I don't say, I don't say that to boast about me. <laughs> Who's me? I say that to illustrate, kids, you have the power within you right now. You have the capacity within you right now to make some decisions right now on this very day, during this very hour, while I get to preach. That can can last a lifetime. That can set you up for such a great, great, blessed life marked with the favor of God. Mom and Dad, I know you want that for your kids. So today, we're going to conclude... Our sermon series for the month of May, our annual stewardship series, comes to a close today. And all God's people said, I knew you would fall for that. That is not good. We're stewards. We're managers, right? And we're we're concluding today our annual stewardship series on the money. And here's what I how I want to conclude. I want to speak specifically to the next generation. 
Kids, I want to share with you today five commitments that I would love for you to make right now on the spot. I would like for you to make today five commitments with regard to your money. And I know you have the power within you to make them, and it could last a lifetime. And, and I'm telling you, you make these commitments, it's going to set you up for a life of blessing. Now, mom and dad, if you haven't made these commitments yet, hey, do you just go right on with us and you make the commitments as well. But five commitments I want to share with the next generation that will set you up to be a joy and a delight filled with the Spirit and so blessed. Number one, I will honor the Lord with my wealth. I will honor the Lord with my wealth. That comes from Proverbs chapter 3, verse 9 and 10. Listen to what Solomon wrote his teenage boys. Honor the Lord with your wealth, with the first fruits of all your crops. Then your barns will be filled with overflowing. Now I can see some of you, you're very smart. Sometimes smart, Ellie, but very smart. I don't raise crops. And I don't have a barn. All right. Honor the Lord with your wealth, with your money. Honor Him first, right? Then, the, uh, with, with the first fruits of all of your income, all the money that you get, honor Him first with it. And then your garages and closets and bank accounts, you know, all that stuff, will be filled and overflowing. Honor the Lord with your wealth. The first commitment I would love for you to make today, I will honor the Lord with my wealth. And here's what I know, kids, here's what I know. When God, when the Lord finds somebody who will honor Him, when the Lord finds somebody who will give Him the glory, honor, and praise, the Lord keeps using that somebody for more glory, honor, and praise. I will honor the Lord with my wealth. For commitment number one. I mean, it's all His anyway, isn't it? And we're really just bringing him back to him when he needs it, right? I will honor the Lord with my wealth. Now, so kids in the audience, and big kids, if you want to, you, you have done this, you want to do it too, or you want to reaffirm, that's cool too. Uh, kids in the audience, would you just raise your right hand? Your other right, there you go. <laughs> would you raise your right hand, and if, you, you know, if you're ready to make a commitment that could set you up for a lifetime of blessing, hey, would you repeat after me? I will honor the Lord with my money. All right, now it's kind of weak, so we're going to try one more time. I just want to make sure everybody's hearing this. I will, raise your right hand, everybody, not, not your left hand. Okay. I will honor the Lord with my money. That's commitment number one, which sets up commitment number two. This is so huge. Commitment number two is, I will have a plan for my money. I will have a plan for my money. Look at this proverb. It's really interesting. I, I, I hate that it's true, but look, look at this. Cast but a glance at riches, and they are gone, for they will surely sprout wings and fly off to the sky like an eagle. That's kind of odd, picturing your money sprouting wings and flying away. Mom and dad, isn't that so true? Where did he go? Well, it sprouted wings and flew away. That's where it went. Now, kids, this is so important. This is so huge. And the commitment is, I will have a plan for my money. I will have a plan for my money. Now, listen, if I were to give you kids $100 today, if I were to give you everyone a $100 bill today, and I would say, hey, go out this week, enjoy it, spend it, do whatever you want to with it, and you came back in next Sunday, and I interviewed you, and I said, hey, tell me what, tell me what you did with your $100. Most of you would be like, well, I... Uh, I um, and we went to Candy Kitchen. Um... I, I have no idea what I did. You spent $100? You don't know what you did with it? Well, I, I did buy... Uh, I have no idea. You know why you have no idea? Because a plan, uh, money without a plan for it sprouts wings and flies away. 
And you won't have any idea where it went. You need to have a plan. I will have a plan with my money. Now, the plan that I re- like to recognize or recommend, now kids, I, I really want you to get this one. I call it 10 10 80. All my life I've been committed to this plan 10 10 80. My mom and dad taught me 10 10 80. 10%, the first 10% going to the Savior, the second 10% going to a savings account, and then the third, the 80% for spending. 10, 10, 80. The first 10% bringing back to the Lord. The second 10% stashing away in a savings account that I'm not going to touch. Uh, it's going to be an emergency fund. It's going to be there ready for rainy days. So, you know, when I get older and I get married and the washer breaks, no big deal. There's money there to cover it. First 10 to the Savior. Second 10 to a savings account. And then the 80% to live and give. Budget, make a plan that you're just going to live and give out of 80%. Kids, you start that now, you go into your teens with that philosophy, you get your first job with that philosophy, you are going to be very well off financially. Mom and dad, just not embarrassing, but just quick raise of hands, how many of you wish you would have started that when you were 10 years old? Yeah. Hey, I want the best for your kiddos. Kids, and I'm so excited today because if you make commitments based upon today's message, it's going to set you up for a nice life, a very nice life, blessed and marked by the favor of God. Third commitment. Oh, wait a minute. Kids, raise your right hand. If you're, if you're, if you're, if you're liking this, you're believing this, and you want the favor of God, and you, you know, ready to make this commitment, would you repeat after me? I will... Have a plan with my money. Beautiful. You're in. You're in. I will honor the Lord with my wealth. I will have a plan for my money. Here's the third one. Here's the third commitment. Oh, this one's the hardest maybe. I will learn to be content and grateful. I will learn to be content and grateful. Now, there's not many people in our culture who have learned the secret of being content. You know how I know? They're always shopping. (laughs) Retail therapy is not an option. (laughs) But there's so many people in our culture, they're not content. They're not content. And I want you to make a commitment. I'm going to be content and I'm going to be grateful. To be content means I'm satisfied with who God made me. And I'm satisfied with what God gave me. I'm content. I'm content. Being content means I'm not always having to have more. I don't always have to have more. I don't always have to have the the newer, the bigger, the best. I don't have to have more. You know what? I'm kind of content with what the Lord has already gave me. And here's the secret. It's being thankful. We need to be way more thankful for what we already have. Thankful. I will learn to be content and thankful. The Apostle Paul models. He says this one time. He said, I have learned the secret of being content regardless the situation. He faced some pretty bad situations. And he learned the secret of being content. So kids, get them up one more time. If you believe it, you want it to happen, marked with a blessed life. I will learn to be content and grateful. This one's so important, I want to do it again and with a little bit of louder oomph behind our voices. I will will learn to be content content. and very grateful to mom and dad. (laughs) You see what I'm doing. All right, here we go. Number four, I love this one. I will invest wisely for the future. I love this illustration. But Solomon, he's so cool. Look at this, look at this. Go to the ant. I want you to think of an ant. Big ant. Not ant man, just a little ant. Go to the ant, you sluggard. Consider his ways. And I want you to be wise. I want you to learn from the ant. He has no commander. He has no overseer. He has no ruler. He has no one telling him and commanding him what to do, right? 
Yet he stores his provisions in the summer and gathers its food at harvest. You know what the ant does and does really well? He stores all his food in the summer, works really hard in the summer, and then goes to Florida and enjoys all the provision. <laughs> it's a good plan. Some of you do that as well. It's a good plan. I will invest wisely for the future. Kids, that's why that's what, this is part of having a good plan. Hey, yeah, the first part's going to honor the Lord. And the second part, I, I'm going to stick away in a savings that's really going to provide for the future. When, when rainy days come, you got an emergency fund, something, the wheels fall off the bus, you need to, you know, you have a savings in place because you're investing wisely for the future. Hey, just learn from the ant. Can I remind you? And some, some things that I'm telling you are a little hard to understand when you're young. But can I just remind you that if you just live from paycheck to paycheck, if you get a paycheck and spend it all that week, that's not wise. And if you spend everything you have, that's not wise. The Bible says that's foolish. And so get them up, kids. Let's do this one. I will... Invest wisely for my future. We got one more. I will use my resources to bless others. I will use my resources to bless others. I love this one. God called Abraham of the Old Testament, called him and said, Hey, hey well, I choose you. For no real good reason, I just like the way you look. Come over here. And Abraham says, All right, yes, Lord. And, and God said, you know what? I'm going to make you the father of many nations. And I'm going to bless you like crazy. You're going to become great. And I expect you to use that to bless other people. And Abraham lived his life with this mantra, blessed to bless. Blessed to bless. Kids, that's a great mantra for all of us. Blessed to bless. Blessed to bless. And I will, I will use my resources to bless other people. You're, uh, your parents are going to have an opportunity here in a few minutes to, to you know, bless somebody else uh, through the love bucket as we provide for little Garrett who was, who was run over, uh, hit by a car. Oh, it, it, uh, whew, he's had a hard week. And we're going to send a love bucket his way. And we're going to use our resources to bless others. But I would love for you to make this commitment because, because of this. Look at the Bible. Look what it promises. A generous person will prosper. Kids, I want the best for every one of you. I don't want you hurting in life. I don't want you growing up with tears and pain and turmoil. I want you having a blessed life. A generous person will prosper. Whoever refreshes others will himself be refreshed. That's a promise from the word of God. Uh, look at this one from Ephesians chapter 4. Anyone who has been stealing must steal no longer. Well, we know that. But look what it says. But must work doing something useful with their hands that they may have something to share with those in need. Here's the commitment. I will use my resources. To bless others. So kids, one more time. Raise your right hand. And with your outside voices this round. I will. I will use my resources. Use my resources to, bless to bless others. Kids, I, I share these things to you because I know. You have the capacity to make some commitments today. That will last a lifetime. You have the capacity to make some decisions today. That will set you up for a blessed, blessed life. Wow. Here's how I want to close. Two cool things. Recruit your mom and dad's help on these. Two things. I, I, would, I would challenge everybody in the audience. Two things. First, would you take the Proverbs challenge? I don't know if you noticed, but all of these texts came for, out of the Proverbs. It's the wisdom of Solomon trying to be passed on to the next gen. Would you take the Proverbs challenge? Here's the Proverbs challenge. The Proverbs challenge is this. I want it to go through the whole summer, June, July, and August. June, July, and August. And every day of the month, I would love for you to read the chapter of Proverbs that corresponds to the day of the month. For example, this coming Wednesday is June 1. I would love to challenge you to read Proverbs chapter 
1. Oh, that was easy. So Thursday is going to be June 2, and I would love for you to read Proverbs chapter 2. Man, you're the smartest kids on the planet, I think. And then, you know, next Sunday is going to be a June the 5th, and so you're on that day going to read Proverbs chapter 5. And so do it in June, do it in July, do it in August. It's so full of wisdom. And if you do that, you're, it's, going to be, it's going to be helping you keep these commitments that you made today. The Proverbs are so full of wisdom. One more challenge. And when you leave today, I want to make sure, kids, that you get... I'm going to give you a credit card. Well, it's not really a credit card. It's in the likeness of a credit card. And when you leave today, in fact, we have one for everybody... When you leave today, will you make sure you get one of these master's cards? It's so cool. Master's card. Now, this is... My son Micah graduated this past Friday and, uh, from high school. And in order to graduate, you have to do a senior project. Well, he did Christians and Finances. And here was his project. A credit card... Esque reminder that it's the master's card. And this is what's so cool. On the back is a place for your signature, just like a credit card. And the, the signature line is designed for those of you making these commitments. And the commitments are listed on the back. And it will remind you that I'm going to honor the Lord with my wealth. And it's going to remind you I'm going to have a plan for my money. And it's going to remind you that I will learn the secret of being content and grateful. And I will invest wisely for my future. And I will use my resources to bless others. Make sure you do not leave this place today without your master's card. Everyone should have one. And then you might want to just keep it in your wallet. Ladies, you might want to keep it in your purse. Kids, put it somewhere where you're going to be reminded, oh yeah, I made those commitments and my life is changed.